As a former law enforcement officer and seasoned cybersecurity professional, I've seen time and time again people's personal identifiable information get compromised. Today, I'd like to share with you some things that you can do to protect your digital information in this era of cybersecurity that we live in. Earlier, right before TEDx Evansville started, you were asked to take a selfie or take a picture and do all that right before the talk started. How many people in the audience took a picture before the talk started? Okay. Good. So we're all leaving a digital footprint right here today at, the, uh, at TEDx Evansville. So think about, you know, ask yourselves, am I hacked? Think about as you move throughout Evansville in the tri-state area, there's all these different wireless networks that are available. Wi-Fi hotspots, cellular networks that allow us to disconnect from the office, conduct business really anywhere that we go on the fly. As you move around Evansville, Think about all the amount of data that's out there, the data and the digital breadcrumbs that you're leaving here at TEDx Evansville today. We truly live in a sea of data. In 2015, U.S. households, 8.7 zettabytes of data did we consume as Americans. To put things in perspective, one zettabyte of data is equivalent to every grain of sand on planet Earth. That's a sheer amount of data. So the average U.S. household, 75 gigs of data from having to use cable, think about the digital streaming services that you use, YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, all these streaming technologies that allow us to really take entertainment anywhere that we go. Personal technologies. The smartphone really revolutionized how we communicate with our friends and family, but it also makes the perfect spy device, right? It has a front-facing camera, a rear-facing camera, a microphone on it, a touch ID to access the device right here from the palm of your hand. You have more power computing technology in the palm of your hand than you do from laptops and personal computers going back five or 10 years. So that's really revolutionized how we communicate when it comes to social media. Think about social media. Anytime world events, a tragedy occurs or something happens, hopefully people that are using Twitter and other social media days tweeting out TEDx Evansville, right? As live events are occurring, we are constantly sharing information. Which leads us to the connected car. The connected car Bluetooth technology has been in cars, if you can believe it or not, for almost 10 years. Think about the first time you took a family vacation, didn't have to open up the glove box and hope somebody remembered to grab the almanac or the map so you knew how to get from point A to point B. You were able to use that GPS, stream your music right to your device, which leads us to where we're at today, the Internet of Everything, or the Internet of Things is what it's called. A few weeks ago, uh, there was a large distributed denial of service attack, a DDoS attack, uh, that was fairly publicized and documented on the internet. What makes it unique, it was one of the largest, the largest in the internet history DDoS a type of attack. And what it was doing, it was leveraging a lot of these Internet of Things devices, those web cameras that we have at home to monitor our house while we're away, those baby monitors that we have to mo monitor our, our small children uh, at night as well. Attackers were able to leverage these devices to take down other types of networks. So these types of threats are real and they are happening today. Imagine leading to the Internet of Everything, coming home from the grocery store, turning on the street to your home, you know, getting two blocks from your house, the lights come on you know, to the porch, the garage door opens up. Everything is seamless because we have our smartphone, our car, Bluetooth technology, all these different technologies, bringing the connected home to life. Show of hands, who has a wireless thermostat in their home? Okay, good. Right, the Internet of Everything. Imagine if an attacker, while you were on vacation, maybe during the winter, right, we're running the furnace, we probably turn it down when we're gone, but imagine if they were able to turn up the heat in your home, worst case scenario, to 100 degrees, the next thing you know, you're getting a phone call from a neighbor, a good friend, or even the fire department that something bad has happened at home while you were away. So these types of threats are real and they are occurring today. So if you're not scared yet, pause for a minute. Why should you be concerned? It's almost daily that, you know, our credit cards are compromised. Our credit cards to the digital underground and to the hacker community, your credit card number is almost, worse, almost worthless, worthless anymore. Now they're going for your medical record. Imagine being at the doctor's office or the hospital, getting ready to have a procedure, having those intimate details and uh, conversations with your doctor and then a, an attacker getting access to your medical record, knowing exactly what procedures you have. That is a treasure trove for information for attackers. Biometric data. Earlier I talked about the smartphone, right? 
me using my fingerprint to connect to this device. That is also a target for attackers, which leads us to predictive intelligence. Anytime there's one of these data breaches that occurs, it's usually dumped on a site somewhere on the internet. Everybody's information has probably been compromised once, probably a dozen times today. A few weeks ago, Yahoo announced 500 million user accounts were compromised. If you are using Yahoo as a service, any of these hacks that have occurred, the security questions that you use, if you're using those same security questions across multiple accounts, that is a treasure trove for attackers. If you put your real date of birth in those security question fields, attackers are using that information. It's a, an intelligence honeypot, per se, which leads us to biometric data. In 2014, the OPM hack, as it's often referred to as, or the Office of Personnel Management hack, almost six million fingerprints were stolen of people that have the highest level of security clearance in our government. Other countries can now leverage and use this data to find out, one, if they have any spies internally in their country, but also, two, identify people and then, as far as our intelligence community, identify exactly who these people are. Earlier this year, there was a local hospital that was hit with ransomware, a ransomware attack, the Lockheed ransomware attack. It wasn't up until that event we would hear about hospitals in Hollywood hospitals on the East Coast that were compromised or hit with a ransomware. Imagine going in and having a procedure, going under general anesthesia, and a ransomware event occurring where they, the anesthesiologist already administered that anesthesia, and now that kind of changes the entire landscape and the entire ball game because a ransomware event occurred. I will say this, the hospital in this particular situation did an excellent job communicating to the public and to the media that there was indeed a cyber attack that was going on. Hospitals are trained to treat a cyber attack like they do any other type of natural disaster. There's good news. So what can you do to help protect your information, to not be that low-hanging fruit on the tree that attackers go after? Financial information. When you're accessing your bank accounts, your trade accounts, all these different information, make sure you're doing it from a secure terminal. Use separate email accounts to access that financial information. Use separate email addresses for your social media account. Try to keep personal and business separate as you can. When you're at that grocery store or that retail store and you have a chip-enabled credit card, use the chip on that credit card. Take that extra 15 seconds to do that versus using the mag stripe on the back of the credit card. Social media. Use social media. But remember, if it's a free service, you are the product. And what I mean by that, advertisers sell and use that information and sell your information to other people. If I'm a marketing person, I do not need your name and date of birth. I can use that unique identifier that's associated with that app on your smartphone to track you across different technologies, different apps, and different websites that you visit. Think before you click. I know, you know, curiosity usually, usually kills the cat, right? Think before you click on that email or that text message. More, most of the time, like these ransomware attacks and a lot of these types of security events, they require some type of user interaction on your part. So thinking before you click on that email or that text message. Sending an email or a text message is not an encrypted form of communication. It is unencrypted. It's no different than being on vacation and sending a postcard. Any as that postcard travels through the post office, any hands that, lay, that touch that postcard can see it exactly what's written on the back of the postcard. Same thing holds true when it comes to email and text messages, which brings us to encryption. I think the Snowden revelations really drove home just the amount of metadata when the government said, we're not collecting the content of your text messages or your phone calls, just the metadata. Hopefully I've demonstrated just some things, I don't, not knowing that content, but you can paint and connect the dots with just various pieces of information. If you, on your smartphone, check your app store. There are many apps out there that let you encrypt and communication. Definitely do not be sending anything personal that you don't want anybody to see over an app or an email. Some of the major browsers like Mozilla, Firefox, and Google Chrome have plugins that you can run. Use ad blockers in these different technologies, one, to protect malware from hitting your computer, but two, to share exactly what the information that you're linking out there. Unfortunately, a lot of major websites now are, we notice that you're running an ad blocker. We're not going to display the content correctly. So that's one of those things that's still kind of be ironed out, but it's definitely good to protect you know, your browsing by using these ad blockers. 
Getting away from password to passphrases. This is my super secret password, right? Hopefully your password's not one, two, three, four, five, six, password monkey or one of those many thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of flavors of passwords that have been leaked on the internet. I would not use this password um, because just as this talk's being streamed live and recorded, some attacker is probably dumping this into their uh, dictionary right now and they're gonna use it on additional attacks. But if you'll notice, I've included spaces in this passphrase. A space is a character. Think of a long phrase, something that's intimate to you, not a security question, but that you use and that you hold dearly. Use that as a passphrase and leverage that passphrase using a password manager to separate different passwords for email accounts, social media, financial accounts. Separate, segregate those and utilize a password manager. Two-factor authentication, even like Facebook right now, a lot of the social media services allow you to turn on two-factor authentication. Leverage two-factor authentication. One caveat, like I said earlier, sending a text message is not encrypted. If you're getting that token over text message, just be aware that that can be intercepted. Use a password like Google Authenticator and these other one-time password apps in your app store to allow you to encrypt and have that secure connection whenever you get your password. I think one of our founding fathers said it best. Those who surrender freedom for security will not have, nor do they deserve, either one. So how do we apply what Benjamin Franklin said 240 years ago to today? I'm telling you today to use our digital ecosystem in everything that you do. Talking to friends, shopping, conducting business, sending email. Use it in literally everything that you do. But just remember, do not necessarily take convenience over security. So what my call of action to you today is talk to neighbors, talk to friends, talk to family, leverage your inner superhero. Hopefully these basic information that I've shared with you today will allow you to protect yourself and make you less vulnerable to these types of attacks. Remember, with powerful technology comes great responsibility. Thank you.